you make that conscious decision of you know what starting from today i'm gonna be black or i'm gonna be Yo, puerto one of rican the funniest or... things that she ever said which i didn't know was a thing she uh -huh. said i'm transracial <laughs> like, no this lady said the same shit <laughs> bitch the fuck is what the fuck is no this 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 lady said the same shit she yeah. identified as trans black the fuck out of here, like, dog. dude, you can't make up this fucking is words, bro. He goes, I was born in this filthy white skin my whole <laughs> life, but I knew <laughs> I was gonna be kissed by the golden black sun. Yeah, but um, the, the, yeah, I think the most hilarious shit about this is that she canceled. Bitch, herself. I'm transracial too, then, ho. The fuck? That's the crazy I mean, thing. Can, I remember. In five, four, three, two, two one. one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. What's up, y'all? We have Edric back in the house today. Yes, sir. Talking about some funny shit. Yeah, yo, I read this comment mm -hmm. <laughs> the other day. That mm -hmm. was so fucking funny. This dude wrote, he goes, your podcast title is the most pretentious thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> like, you don't talk about anything intelligent. Yeah. You guys just make stupid jokes. Yeah. I was like, bro, genius brain is sarcastic. It means you're dumb. You <laughs> fucking moron. You're so stupid. Oh, man, that's like, it's like if you just took a moment, because if you don't know what the origin of that word or phrase or whatever is, just take a moment. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't take too long to Google. <laughs> I know. Also too, genius brain isn't even an actual word. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's already a two words that I compounded together. Right. It's, so what the fuck are you talking about guy? And I'm, I wonder what these people, when they write this stuff and they're yeah. writing something, they think it's so fucking profound. Yeah. Yeah. That they want people to be, oh man, I fucking agree with you, man. This is just a bunch of dumbasses talking about stupid <laughs> shit. That's exactly what genius brain is sarcastic. You fuck face, yeah. you fucking virgin. I mean, yeah. but a lot of these people who are commenting online man you gotta you gotta well i mean those people who are making those type of comments anyway you gotta assume that they're probably lonely and angry don't got much friends if any friends probably when they die nobody's gonna care <laughs> <laughs> only <laughs> a piece of shit only their mom shows up at the funeral <laughs> well actually no at that point unless you die in early death but that's kind of more there's there's people in this world man that you all you think that everybody has friends there's some people in this world i'm finding out that they actually don't have friends yeah and i'm not making fun of them or anything yeah, yeah. i'm just i don't know what is it like to be in that situation where you have nobody to turn to it's so odd it well it's sad first of all because some of those people might not be dicks and assholes mm -hmm. who who just constantly drive people out of their life right yeah. and that's the reason why they have no friends Maybe some of them are genuinely nice and good people, but they're just socially awkward or antisocial or suffer from anxiety, so they can't really engage with people. I mean, who knows, right? Those are the people that I want to really meet because I want to understand how how did you end up that way? <laughs> like, how, you, want, you want to do a case study? I do. I want to do a fucking case study. Like, how did you end up to the point where every person that you met, they ran the fuck away from you mm. or you couldn't you know, navigate yourself through a conversation ever in your life. Yeah. I find that so odd because I know, because when you're weird or maybe sometimes when you're an outsider or an outcast, mm -hmm. outsiders and outcasts can find other outsiders yeah. and outcasts and they'll find something in common and maybe they'll hate the world together. They'll at least have one best friend. Yeah. But there have been people that I met personally at, at certain shows, they'll come up and they go, listen, I don't have any friends. I only just came here just to see you. And mm -hmm. you're the, you're, you're, I feel like you're my friend because you know, you, you say things that I agree with, but I don't, I don't know anybody out here and it's just me. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at them like, yo, what the fuck? How did this happen? Like, yeah. how did you, how did you not have a single friend? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, man. It's hard to say. I, I feel like a lot of the times, uh, it's just, I don't know, man, they could, they could have gone through those their formative years just kind of getting picked on. And, mm. and as a result, it, it just made them shun people or even scared to engage with people because it's always like, something's wrong with me. People don't like me. People always make fun of me. I'm a fucking loser. I'm worth... So it's like kind of... Uh, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. They yeah, can't get out of it. almost a self-fulfilling prophecy and their self-worth is just mm -hmm. such at a such low that they don't maybe feel like they deserve companionship or a significant other or, you know, just, just kind of along those lines and then they just end up being stuck. Have you seen, um, do, do you know Jason, Jason Lee? He's, he does this channel called the Jubilee Project and they mm. do a lot of like socially conscious stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm like, 
kind of it, Jubilee Project rings a bell from like yeah. back in the day. So they'll have certain videos mm-hmm. where they'll have like a crip talk to a blood mm-hmm. and all this other stuff, which is funny because when I first started this podcast, I wanted to have like those type of conversations. Yeah. But I got a little scared. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, it's, hell it's, like, it's they just kill me each in other. here and they start <laughs> fucking, you know, but they, they did one where it was feminist versus um, what's the, what's the, op- what's the opposite of a male feminist or uh, a female feminist, a fe- female feminist. What's, what's the opposite of a feminist? A female feminist, dumbass, mm. genius brain, baby. I don't know what is the word for that. What is that? There's feminist, and for the males, is what? It's a melanist. I don't, I don't know what the. I don't fuck know. It is. I don't know what the word for that. But is. either way, yeah. they basically had um, pro men rights uh-huh. versus pro female rights, uh-huh. right? Which I didn't realize that there was men fighting for men's rights. I didn't know that was a fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Which I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think anybody has ever said or looked at the male gender and said that we don't have stuff that the female gender has right, to, you know what right, I'm saying right. so I thought it was hilarious and when I first looked at that video I thought I assumed that it was a, a funny video like yeah. a parody but these guys are actually people who are fighting for quote unquote men's rights I mean what I don't understand what they would be fighting for I like, don't know you should watch that video it's uh, very interesting it's is like fairly recent it's I don't know if it's maybe a couple years ago okay, a year ago okay but there was one kid on there he is hilarious mm. because he is the definition of what you would think a fucking male's right male rights activist is mm-hmm. and it's this kid who like lives in his mom's basement mm-hmm. this chubby little white boy yeah. and as he's speaking to these women across that are sitting across from him he's not even lo- making eye contact with them he's looking mm-hmm. at the floor and he's talking about what a male's role in society is and how women should be yeah and it's like dog you you have never seen a woman naked, never right. touched a woman, never kissed a woman, but you want to tell a woman where her place is in society and yeah. in a home? Yeah. It's like, dog. It just who sounds are like you? these incels, you know? <laughs> he is definitively a fucking incel. Yeah. It's crazy. They hate women because they can't get women for mm. whatever reason. And then they start to develop all these crazy ideas of what a woman is, how women should act. Um, and most of the time, it's very misguided, <laughs> he you was know? Telling, he was saying shit like women belong in the kitchen type of shit. <laughs> he goes, I prefer uh, traditional uh, female and male gender roles. As he's saying this, he's looking at the floor, yeah. looking all around. He can't even look at these women a in their face. Or like he's a teenager? He's a teenager. Okay. Wow. I mean, that's even worse because even if you had that point of view... Your worldview has not been shaped enough. At, at, at a yeah, who the fuck do you think you are at the age yeah. of sixteen? What experience do you have in, in that type of dynamic between a male and female to be able to speak that definitively about a woman's role should be this or a woman's role is this? Right? So like you're a fucking teenager, man. He was saying some funny shit because he was also talking about how, you know, obviously uh, physiologically men mm. are stronger than than women. Right. Just you know, st- statistically speaking, obviously yeah. there's going to yeah. be certain women that are stronger than men. Yeah. But he was he was kind of making that a point. But uh, the funny thing is, is like I bet you. Any one of these girls can fuck you up at any time, bro. <laughs> Shut the fuck. It was one of the, f- it's it's funny, it's hilarious, and it's yeah. a little irritating watching this video. Yeah. It's probably one of their best videos that they made. You have to watch that shit. Yeah, no, I mean, I could, I could already kind of get an idea of what type of people or what type of guys um, would be on that video because I've definitely seen comments like that online, yeah. um, especially on, on places like Reddit where, you know, these people are... Uh, brave because they're anonymous. Nobody will ever know who they are, where they are, right? There's something to be said about that though. Like I I, I definitely think that there's something, sh- there's something should be done about that. Mm-hmm. And it's not like I want to police or control um, some, you know, freedom of speech or anything like yeah. that, no matter what the platform is, whether it's in person or whether it's online. But because now people don't have that sense of personal responsibility and there aren't any consequences for that, mm-hmm. people can mouth off however the fuck they want. Yeah. And it's it's a little, it, it's a, it even annoys me. I've been on this space for a very long time. Yeah. But like one of the most annoying comments that I always get is that, for example, I told the story about, um, it's a story that I've told like three or four times over. And mm. it's that time when- On, on podcasts? On podcasts, okay. on, on other people's podcasts yeah. too. And it's almost like I have to bring people in mm-hmm. to, to prove what I'm saying is <laughs> to true. To verify the to story. To verify the story. <laughs> but it's literally the story when I was in college and I pulled a knife on somebody. Uh-huh. And the weird thing is, is it's 
it's these, it's a lot of the times it's these kids who are anonymous, right? Yeah. But you could go on their page and I'll click on and see what they are. They, yeah. They're gamers. Uh -huh. They don't, they <laughs> literally have zero interaction with human beings and they're like 14 or 15 years old. Yeah. Some of them are even older and they yeah. go impossible. It's because they look at somebody like me who I'm a very nice and I, I speak well mm -hmm. and they go, that's impossible. There's no way you were involved in stuff like that. I'm like, I'm not telling you like it's a treasure. Like it's something I'm very happy mm -hmm. that you and I just grew up very differently. And I think like for them, because they've only seen things on TV, they never grew up around certain people. Yeah. And they can only assume how how people are based on how they look. Mm -hmm. They go, oh, if somebody did dangerous stuff or they got into a fight, mm -hmm. they need to have tattoos. They need to be in a gang. And these are the <laughs> only people that'll fight, that, that will get into fights. Yeah, yeah. And it's so odd. And it's like, and it's not my point to go ahead and prove this to anybody else, but it's, it's, it's just a weird thing how somebody could sit in a seat and they try to make themselves feel a certain way by telling somebody else that what they live isn't real. Oh, well, I mean, listen, man, a lot of these guys and girls, anonymity is their greatest strength online. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that they can hide behind uh, an avatar or, or an alias, a username, whatever the case is, that emboldens them. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I, there's no real way to police that. I mean, obviously places like forums, uh, subreddits, the, the admins can ban them you know, mm -hmm. but other than that, it's not going to stop them from going around expressing their views and their opinions about certain subject matter the way they want to. Um, and it's like, I, I get it. Cause remember I told you too, sometimes I get baited seeing shit on Twitter yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. like, I know what that entails. I know the hole I'm going to be going down if I engage in this, but once in a while, it rubs me the wrong way. Just just a certain wrong way where I, I got to say something. And then afterwards, you're always like, why the fuck did I even take the time to do that? Even you know, if it was like one, a, two it minutes. It felt like a scratch you need to itch. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and every time, I'm like, ah, I, I feel like I said my piece, but at the end of the day, it accomplished nothing because this person or you know i mean i'm not any bot. better too because sometimes i do things to piss people off and it makes me laugh super hard well that's just trolling <laughs> yeah <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah so you know i, I do yeah. it too. i don't do it to somebody anonymous but i do it to somebody who says something dumb uh -huh. and then i'll write something even more dumb yeah. just to, just because i know it's going to make them angry <laughs> you know they'll write some like for yeah, example yeah, yeah. you know they'll write some comment and i know for a fact what happens is mm -hmm. that when they write their comment i write one back immediately mm -hmm. if i happen to catch it yeah i then give it like 10 seconds yeah. so they could read my comment and then i, then I block them <laughs> because <laughs> i know that they read the fucking i literally told them that i'm gonna fuck their mom yeah and that i just jacked off in her eye and they that's the last thing that they read and, <laughs> and they try to write back and yeah. they go you've been blocked <laughs> i know it kills them for a fucking fact because i've done that before and yeah. they've created a second instagram account just just to write back and say so you're fucking afraid of me so you don't want to say all this shit then i write the same comment again yeah, block that. and then i block them again and i'm just dying laughing yeah. because i know for a fact how much it bothered them because they had to go out of their way to create a new email mm -hmm. to create a new instagram account just to write something again no nah, i mean that's the thing I i'm not gonna lie man Sometimes I troll too, just because sometimes people take things way too seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's like, come on, man. It ain't that serious. You know what I mean? It's hard to be above it, man. It's so hard sometimes. It is. It is. That, well, that's exactly why I, I fucking took a break from social media and kind of detached myself from that. Because, you know, the more you're on the platforms and the more you're engaging with it, the higher the chance you're going to see one of those things where you're just like, Ooh, this motherfucker <laughs> irritates me in a special way, you know? Um, it's just like, I don't need that type of aggregate, aggravation in my life, man. That's true. Yeah. But you, it's a different story. You, it's a different story because you, that's your platform. I that, know. Yeah, that <laughs> It's my house. Yeah, exactly. You stepped into my house. <laughs> yeah. And you muddied up my fucking floors with those filthy ass fucking shoes. <laughs> he said, fuck your couch. <laughs> fuck your couch, dude. And I start fucking stopping. Oh my God, dude. A freaking uh oh if you guys don't know right outside of my office you could see the the most ridiculous oh, yeah. fires in california yeah, right that now that's just crazy right now so if you guys don't know california on both uh north and south is burning i don't know why what happened in a, in uh northern california but my mom says it's terrible like in sacramento dude did you see the pictures from san francisco the san francisco it's just the purely orange, right? 
it looks like hell. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they're in hell, bro. It's crazy. It looks like a fucking movie. Well, do you know what happened over there? I don't. Northern I mean, California? I, I just think it's the because the dry season. Mm. You know, it's so dry. Everything's catching on fire right now. Well, this was record record breaking. Yeah. Heat. Yeah, in in our area too. I don't know exactly where it was, but it was near Azusa, or it was towards the mountainside. Mm-hmm. But some fantastic, beautiful couple, uh, they're apparently pregnant. Yeah. Right, the woman is pregnant, so they they did a gender reveal party, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they decide to use fucking pyrotechnics yep. and explode some shit on the day that it was the, the hottest. hottest day in LA's history. Yeah, that's the San Bernardino County. So that they started those fires, but. Let's speak about that shit. Not not just them doing that, which is stupid as fucking hell, but about these gender reveals. There, it's been the hottest fucking thing lately, dude. Like I, I don't fuck. All right. Do you do you have any gripes with it about how people make gender reveals such an like extravagant? Like it's a I don't it's a fucking care. Now. I literally don't I fucking feel the care. Same fucking. It's like why do you need to set this fucking shit up? Like okay, we have to make it like this and then we're going to do this and then we're going to shoot it like this. And it's like, dude. This podcast is brought to you by Skillshare, my friends. Do you know what Skillshare is? If you don't, let me tell you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Now, when you hear this, I know you're thinking, shut the hell up. I don't want to go back into school. We're not talking about that. You know, after school, when you want to work on these different projects, or for me anyways, like when I wanted to get into video editing, I didn't have any sources for me to learn from, except for, you know, a few videos here and there on YouTube. Well, guess what? We can get into specifics. I am actually learning stuff right now on Skillshare, specifically when it comes to filming. The course that I'm taking right now is filmmaking from home, turn found footage into a compelling video. When I was starting to do videography or when I got into filmmaking, I wish I had stuff like this that I could reference from instead of hunting through thousands of random online courses that honestly was really hard to filter through and I wasted a lot of time. So if you do want to learn stuff or you have a skill that you want to dive into, whether it's for a a business or whether it's videography, writing a book or anything else, Skillshare is going to be there for you. So explore your your creativity and get two free months of premium membership at skillshare.com slash brain that's two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free get started and join today by heading to skillshare.com slash brain that's two free months of unlimited access to thousands of classes at skillshare.com slash brain just fucking say whether or not it's a exactly. male or a fe- who gives a fuck? And I gotta show up in some themed costume. You're like, well, the that's theme. What th- that's the, what I'm saying. The theme bro. is elves and lilies. Yeah. Fuck you. How about that? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, man! Right? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ, it, man! It, it's been the hottest fucking thing where they have the blue powder or the pink powder. Yeah, man. They'll, they'll, a boxer will always do well, it with gloves. It'll explode. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they'll 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 always find creative ways to do it. But I'm just, I don't. I mean, if I were to think about it, I think. It's become a thing maybe in about the past five or six years, yeah. I would say. I don't know when it started becoming a thing. And the only thing I can associate it to is the gram culture. Is that you have to make this You gotta a show spectacle. out a little bit. Right. Or it's, it's not real. But it's like, dude, who gives a fuck, man? It's just, it's the gender of your fucking child. I understand it's, it's, it's a big deal, right? But you don't have to fucking force people to participate in 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 this uh this festivity that you've created uh, to yeah. reveal the gender of your ch- just fucking say i'm i'm having a boy i'm having a girl congratulations it's weird man i've i it definitely it's it's for the gram and i i always crack up because i want to see the gender reveal party mm. where they have i don't know let's say two balloons mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and they're both white and you don't know what's what it's going to be yeah. and the dad comes up and he pops a balloon yeah and it's pink. Yeah. And the dude just looks pissed. <laughs> I want to see the video where the gender reveal party where he finds out the gender and yeah. he just gets fucking mad yeah. that he found out that it wasn't a boy. I or think girl. they've done like kind of parodies of, of those type of oh, things okay. of gender. I, I think I've seen a couple where, yeah, uh, either the um, guy or the girl just kind of flips their shit because they wanted, you know, yeah. a, a certain gender. But I haven't seen a real one of that. I don't give a fuck what the gender of my kid is. 
honestly. Honestly, yeah. I, look, I ideally would like a boy and a girl just to get experience. At the of, same time. Too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, it, it can happen. Has a dick come out of a pussy? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> like that's the, a little <laughs> bit different from what I was saying. I was thinking twins and having no, I was male. Thinking about that child is a boy and a girl, <laughs> and the penis comes out the pussy like a fucking oh, alien mouth. <laughs> It's just a giant clit at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the elongated yeah. clitoris. It's crazy. These fires, but by, by the way, it, it, when you're in, like for for example, like the San Bernardino County, they yeah. let you know that brush fires are very eminent, like yeah. during this season. Yeah, yeah. It's not something that these motherfuckers didn't know, and if they didn't fucking know, they're the, the dumbest people I have never met. <laughs> yeah. The fucking dumbest. Oh, uh, when and I who invite? First of all, you assholes. Who invites somebody to a party yeah. on a day that's nearly 120 degrees? You are the worst hosts ever. <laughs> if anybody invited me to a wedding, yeah. a party that's when it's 120 degrees yeah. and it's outside, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you and your children. Yeah. It's like, listen, uh, I'm happy for you, but. I know I would much rather enjoy just staying indoors. I know. <laughs> rather than uh, participating. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe they just did. I don't really know the details of that story. I just saw, I just kept seeing it in the headlines of, mm. you know, a gender reveal causes these fires. Now, I don't know if it was that they actually invited people to come over and it was this party or they were oh, just- a hundred percent. Oh, it was? Nobody okay. does a gender reveal party by <laughs> themselves, bro. Or it could have just been streaming. You know what I mean? They are not streaming shit, dude. It's San Bernardino County. Those motherfuckers <laughs> barely have internet out there. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They, <laughs> no masks, no social distancing. No masks, distancing. no nothing. They yeah. invited a bunch of their fucking loser friends and they <laughs> lit the whole world on By fire. By the way, bring fireworks. <laughs> I know. You should name your kid Climate Change. <laughs> you fucked everything up. It's yeah, terrible. Yeah. And and uh, right right outside of Dave's place right here, you know, it's there's fucking mountains on fire. It's like the craziest shit. I wish I brought my DSLR because you can, it, it looks like a scene out of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. The fight of Mordor. Yeah. The whole mountainside is literally in flames. Yeah. I'm not making an exaggeration. This yeah. is not hyperbolic. I'm saying it's <laughs> actually in flames. Yeah. The whole mountainside is red. Right. Like when you see National Geographics and yeah. they kind of have that, that long telescope lens on a camera yeah. and you see lava coming out that's <laughs> yeah. what it looks like it looks like an erupted volcano and the crazy shit is it's actually in the shape of a triangle yeah so it's like uh, outlining kind of these mountains yeah. <laughs> it's like i was driving over here and then i was like why well, are those fucking lights over here in the hills and i'm like holy shit that shit is fire i almost caused an accident because i was like kind of um uh, in a trance <laughs> looking at that thing you know yeah um but yeah it's uh it's pretty bad that 2020 is all fucked up. Man. It's 2020 is bro. literally the worst. So let's let's name it off. So Chadwick Boseman dies. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew that he had cancer, oh, which was the saddest thing I I've know, heard, bro. You know what? You know why I know that number one, I'm a terrible person, why? but I'm also a comic at the same time. But I do have a heart. So in so when Chadwick Boseman passed away, right? Yeah. We were in this podcast. All solemn, super sad, right? Mm -hmm. Just because if you if you watch every Chadwick Boseman interview, he's mm -hmm. just like a super dope, nice guy. But there was a guy that kind of tweet that tweeted out this this um he was basically saying that you don't know what somebody's going through. Mm -hmm. So you should be very careful about what you say about these people when mm -hmm. you make these jokes. Cause mm -hmm. you don't know about people people's personal struggles. Mm -hmm. So he says, Don't he's like, don't act like we forget that you guys were calling uh, Chadwick Boseman a uh, crack panther during that time. <laughs> now that's not even the part that made me laugh. I uh -huh. was like, first of all, Crack Panther, that's terrible, <laughs> yeah. right? But somebody found his old tweet, uh -huh. a, and he called him Crack Panther. He was like the source. Like yeah. he's the one. I was like, how fucking dare you, dude? Some some so somebody wrote they're like this you, and they screenshotted it, and he was making fun of Chadwick Boseman uh -huh. about his weight loss, making fucking Twitter jokes about him. <laughs> After he just blew up on a tweet about being careful about what you say about what people. Like, come Crack on, Panther is the term you coined. Yeah, it was fucking hilarious, uh, dude. I mean, maybe that's just his way of repenting. You know, that's uh, just people. People don't ever believe in the shit that they say. They yeah. just they're just trying to be famous or popular off yeah, of anything. Yeah. That's why Twitter sometimes is the best and it's the worst. Twitter's yeah. the best because it's super hilarious mm -hmm. and you can see porn on there. And then, <laughs> then on top of that, <laughs> you, people will say the most ridiculous things and mm. the most exaggerated things just to get a tweet and a like. Yeah, it's either something super social justicey mm -hmm. that's it's about some kind of social outrage, mm -hmm. or they're trying to make some 
clearly obvious observation just to get people to be like, yo, I agree. It always comes from a point of like entitlement. That's kind of their stance that they take, crack whatever Panther. the subject is. But yeah, the Crack Panther, I mean. <laughs> Dude, when you watch his interviews, he mm -hmm. was super thin. He was. He I actually was. hadn't seen any of those interviews. So I didn't know that he was uh, losing weight. So here's the thing. I did see those when he had lost that weight. And, you and when people Panther? were, no, no. <laughs> I was like, lol, Crack Panther. Yeah. No. Um, when I saw that, I just thought he was, it was for a role. I just assumed yeah. it was for a role. You know, I was I was like, damn, this guy lost a lot of fucking weight, but he's probably getting into a role where it required him to lose this much. I, that was it. I didn't really think much of it. And then come to find out, right, after his pa after he passed that, yeah, he was dealing with cancer. And I was just like, holy shit, man. That made me think, you know, it is true. You don't know what these people are going through and you don't know who these people are as human beings, right? Yeah. Because unless you have that personal relationship, but you can get enough information from kind of like what's happened and, and like what you see going on to get an idea of what this person was, what they stood for. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was able to keep that shit, the fact that even his Marvel family didn't know about it, that it was under wraps that tightly, it's like, man, he got he got real ones around him, you well, know? He, number one, I'm surprised nobody ratted him out like in his family. <laughs> that means they got tight lips. That's what I'm saying. And That's what I'm, Korean it's like, family it's like the, the Kawhi worst. crew. You yeah. know, Kawhi Leonard, when he was choosing what team he was going to go, it was basically like, if it leaks out, I know it's from my circle. Yeah. You know, because I ain't talking to nobody. The yeah. only people who know about it are like the three, four people around him. Mm -hmm. And then so if any news breaks out about where he's going then he knows exactly who stabbed him in the back. Yeah. And maybe it was kind of on that tip too, you mm -hmm. know? It's just like, yo, these are this is fam right here. Like people who are who have this information and if they leak it out to, you know, paparazzi or whatever news media, then you know I know exactly who yeah, did it. Yeah, I know exactly who did it. That just that that shows you, man. When you have people that real around you, that's kind of a testament to your character too. Oh, Cuz that means you're a fucking real one too. They do that out of respect for you as well. You know what I really appreciated about Chadwick Boseman? Mm -hmm. Well, number one, um, I posted this clip that yeah. shit made me tear up was mm -hmm. when he was talking about how he was visiting other termini terminally ill cancer patients. I saw that. And yeah. they were children. Yeah. And this is why he knew that he had, that he was terminally ill, that mm -hmm. he was going to pass away from mm -hmm. cancer, but he didn't tell these kids that he was going to yeah. pass away, but he took his spare time to to make sure that these kids had what they needed before they passed away. Yeah. Blows my fucking mind. I mean, says everything you need to know about that guy. I wouldn't do that. In his time of darkness and weakness, he's choosing to be a source of strength for other people. That's fucking nuts to me. That man. is. I definitely wouldn't do that. A hundred percent. Fuck these kids. Because I'm dying. Because he's so rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be in Barbados getting my dick sucked. He's he's definitely he's definitely somebody else. During the he knows that he has a few months left, maybe a few years. Which, by the way, if people don't know, he was shooting films while he was dying. He shot Black Panther while he was. That's nuts. He was in that shape while he was dealing with cancer, going through chemotherapy. Yeah, insane. Yeah, I know that if if the moment I'm shooting Black Panther, right? Let's yeah. say we're in the middle of the film. Right. Let's say it's an Asian virgin, mm -hmm. uh, fucking uh, yellow cheetah. So we're <laughs> you're shooting yellow cheetah. And then during this time they're shooting and it's like halfway through the film, they go, hey, I know you you have terminally ill cancer. I'm calling off the whole shoot. I'm going to Hawaii. I'm chilling on my last days. But he, he made sure that in his time that he was going to make an impact, mm -hmm. which made me actually, number one, it, it made me kick into gear, help me reflect a little bit. So mm -hmm. in the past, ever since that happened, I've been trying to figure out what I want to do because I haven't really created anything outside of this podcast. Yeah. Well, now that this podcast is set, I'm, I'm trying to think of, okay, what else can I do? I can't shoot any sketches, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. There's no crews. There's no, I don't want to be around other actors yeah, right now. Right. Cause I'm trying to do my part, but it, it, it really, it, it really started to give me a perspective about what I'm doing with my time. Even though I'm not terminally ill, I'm not doing a quarter of what he's doing, mm -hmm. which is fucking insane. Mm -hmm. Oh no, go ahead. No, that's what I'm saying. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, that kind of speaks to the legacy he leaves behind, right? Um, leaving an example for people still here by the way he lived, by the way he acted and it's inspirational. Uh, and that's a huge, huge testament to the legacy he leaves behind. Yeah. Um, and it's like, again, I didn't know him personally, but you get enough information about the dude to know, like, this motherfucker was a real motherfucker. 
You know, yeah. he was a genuine motherfucker. Okay, not, I don't want to keep saying motherfucker. He was a genuine yeah. dude, you yeah. know? He was a genuine guy. And and um, it's- He didn't want sympathy from anybody yeah, either. He man. didn't tell any publications yeah. about his cancer at all. Dog, he would he did the exact opposite of what I would have done, which is it's, which only makes me realize- I'm, I'm dying. Yeah. Somebody help me, please. Dog, I would have told everybody, dude. I was like, you know, I'm dying from cancer, right? <laughs> you don't say shit to me. Yeah, I mean, it's just so crazy to think about because when that happened, I thought about it from a standpoint of what if a close friend of mine um, was going through that and he or she ended up passing and, and I had not known about that the whole time, right? And then I think some of the um, people who were involved with him in like a professional capacity and and a personal capacity were saying how on a selfish level on a selfish level it did kind of anger them because they wish they knew how much time they had left with Chadwick Boseman so that they could have engaged more. Yeah. But the fact that they'll never be able to get that time again, there's that sense of... This podcast is brought to you by Molecule, my friends. Are you waking up every day smelling crap and dust? Well, that's because you do not have a Molecule purifier, my friends. A scientific breakthrough in air purification. Molecule's core technology... PICO, or photoelectrochemical oxidation, actually destroys harmful pollutants in the air like viruses, bacteria, mold, and chemicals instead of just collecting them on filters. It's different. Breathe better, live better. Do you want to live in crap? Ask yourself that. Are you living in poopy? That's you right now. It's tested, it's vetted, it's proven. Remember, molecules, PICO technology, and filtration systems have been tested and verified by third party. That means we're not getting any BS, baby. You're getting the real deal. Breathe for the first time in your life and cry like I am right now because I'm so happy. <sighs> so for my Genius Brain listeners, for 10% off your first air purifier order, visit Molecule.com. That's M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com. And at checkout, enter Brain. Remember, for 10% off your first air purifier order, visit Molecule.com, M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com, and at checkout, enter Brain. Breathe better today. Kind of longing and regret a bit. Um, and it's that's that part really tripped me out, dude, is like to not even know your time with somebody is going to be limited when they know it. Mm -hmm. When they know, okay, my time frame is looking like at best maybe X amount of years, at worst, maybe a few months. Oh, I let all of you know. I'm like, I'm sorry. You guys better treat me nice. I'd make you, you gotta treat me nice. I'd make you carry me out this podcast room and buckle me into my car. hundred percent, dude. It's like, hey, you guys, you guys gotta, you guys gotta not ever say anything bad about yeah, me. Yeah, I don't want to hear <laughs> shit, dude. Positivity. I want bro. you guys to post me foods to me every fucking day. I don't give a fuck. This is this is my Venmo account. You yep. guys gotta. I need I need money, guys. I gotta live a rich and lavish lifestyle before I die. I know. So after that, what Kobe passes away this year? Which, by the way, it's it's. Well, Kobe started this whole whole fucking shenanigans he, of 2020, bro. That dude knew something. <laughs> that dude knew something. He knew I, something. I mean, shit, man. I I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say well. If you're going to die at any point, you know, this was the year to do it because God knows there's millions of people around the world who still wish Kobe was alive, including myself, you know, but that was kind of the beginning of it because up yeah. until that point, there wasn't really too much going on in 2020. And then that shit blindsided us like a motherfucker. It was like. Kobe was the last piece that was keeping the whole world together. I know, man. He was the fucking glue to the to the world, man. To the they should have took Meta World Peace instead, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking carry that. <laughs> you can't like... take a guy like Meta World. His name is Meta World Peace, that man. Don't mean shit. He was so violent. I know. <laughs> he was I such know. a violent basketball but, player. But you know, he 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 had his he had his demons that he was battling with, and and oh, man, thankfully he took the proper. Me I mean, you know the story about how he came onto the Lakers, right? No, you don't know about it. Mm. So. Um, I think it was after uh, Boston had knocked out Kobe or knocked out the Lakers, yeah. right? And you know the the rivalry between Boston and LA is crazy, and so obviously Kobe was pretty steamed up, and and he was he was uh really pissed off, and he was just brooding by himself in the shower in the locker rooms, and a Ron Artest happened to be at that game, Metal World Peace for those of you who don't know, 
Um, and then he just, this is a Kobe, uh, this is a story Kobe has told. He said he just walked in there while he was naked and showering. He said, Kobe, let me help you. I can help you win. <laughs> Get the fuck, you're yeah. lying. You, you tell me he fucking Ron Hartes walked on and I'll go be butt fucking naked. And he said, I can help you. His, his urgency was that great. He was like, let me help you. I can help you win a championship. Who was Artest with at the time? Um, shit. You fucking weirdo. I He's forget. weird though. I forget who he was with at that point. Um, But yeah, anyway, they, that's how. He came in when he was butt naked and showering. Let me help you out. Yeah. I can do it, Kobe. Kobe. I can help you. Come on. You know, I... The fuck? Yeah. That, that was the story. And apparently that's what kind of uh, set the wheels in motion of getting run. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. But that's just the kind of guy he is. He's he's so genuine. You know what? I, he he kind of has like this childlike quality about him where yeah, he's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about dumb, but he's just pure, man. There's something about him that's pure. You pure know, pure rage, pure happiness, pure everything, pure yeah, cocaine. Yeah, it's it's almost uh, unadulterated. Even though he's been, I mean, the, come on, man. When you hear about the stories this guy tells growing up, I think he's from Queens. He, he talked about he saw a friend or somebody get stabbed by a stool leg. <laughs> like what somebody the fuck? broke off a piece of a, a stool leg and stabbed him with it. You know what I mean? So he's seen some crazy shit growing up. And uh, those, those OG hood stories yeah. are fucking nuts, man. <laughs> yeah. They are nuts. When, when I tell my stories, yeah. it sounds so childish yeah. compared to stuff like it's that. It's like novice. It's like who, who breaks off a leg of a chair and stabs somebody yeah. to death? That's fucking nuts. Yeah. I know Dwayne Wade has like crazy stories about him because he grew up in, I think, like the south side of Chicago or something. Oh, really? Like that. But it's it's pretty bad. But I, I, I mean, I don't recollect exactly any specific stories but he was just mm -hmm. talking about yeah when i was younger and i would walk to school i would just see people like dead in dumpsters like mm -hmm. legs hanging out because they somebody crazy. just got murdered the night before yeah and i just would be walking to school and looking at that stuff yeah you know times times are so i think when you look at the the history of of everything mm -hmm. just in the, in the span of a hundred years and people say this is the worst time i was like i don't think it is i think if you look at things in general and just to have a positive outlook mm -hmm. i think these are the best times mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. you can, we, we if we could just make point for point comparisons yeah it's a lot better than it was a hundred years ago for sure yeah. i mean look there's obviously been a lot of progress in a hundred years yeah. right in technology in terms of like uh, social justice, racial justice. I mean, it's still things that people are fighting for right now, but we can definitively definitively say there's progress. Now, how much progress? That's debatable, yeah. but nevertheless, progress. Um, speaking of that, actually, it reminds me of uh, something I saw pretty recently. You hear about this lady, Jessica Krug? Who the fuck is that? <laughs> so she's a professor at the uh, University of Washington, I believe. Um, so she's, uh, I think, like teaches African um, history or, or something like that. Um, and she's basically uh, a black lady. Black lady. Oh, but, don't tell me this is a Rachel Dolezal again. Yeah. You fucking lied to me Dude, right now. Dude, she canceled herself. She outed herself. She came and said... Yeah, I'm just a Jewish woman from Kansas who's been claiming get the a black fuck identity for the past get 20 years. Get the fuck yeah. another Rachel another, Dolezal. But she canceled herself. Nobody re nobody came out and said, hey, you know, you're not. She looked black though? I mean, she was trying to make herself look more black. That's for sure. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, a Jewish white lady from Kansas. Bro. Is she a professor too? Of yeah, like, of, she, like African studies or some shit like that. Get the fuck out of here. This is not real, dude. Yeah. Her and Rachel Dolezal need to meet up. I know. I'm just like, what goes through the mind of these people where you make that conscious decision of, you know what, starting from today, I'm going to be black or I'm going to be Yo, Puerto Rican. One of the funniest or... things that she ever said, which I didn't know was a thing. She uh -huh. said, I'm transracial. <laughs> Yo. No, this lady said the same shit. <laughs> Bitch, the fuck is what the fuck? Is trans no, this, 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 this lady said the same shit. She yeah. identified as trans black. <laughs> the fuck out of it's here, like, dog. dude, you can't make up this fucking words, bro. He goes, I was born in this filthy white skin my whole life, but I knew I was gonna be kissed by the golden black sun. Yeah, but um, the, the yeah, I think the most hilarious shit about this is that she canceled. Bitch, herself. I'm transracial too, then. Oh, 
The fuck? That's the crazy I mean, you thing could, ever you in my could life. Be, you could be trans whatever then. <laughs> whatever yeah. you want to be, you know? I think what I feel like she just, if you look at some of the Rachel Dolezal interviews, mm -hmm. I forgot there was a reporter that was calling her out or just even asking the question. It's yeah. like, um, it was something along the lines of like, I, I heard that you are not black. Is this true? Mm -hmm. And she goes, I, oh, I said, what do you mean? <laughs> she just starts phrasing up. If you look at a photo of Rachel Dolezal in the yeah. past, yeah. she looks like puritan white right right like her father had white curly locks and he was on that uh, he was a quaker on the yeah. quaker oats box that's how <laughs> yeah. fucking white like if she wanted butter she would have to turn it herself in the morning from the cow's pit that's how white she is yeah i i, I don't i wonder what happened i don't know man i that that's the thing that blows my mind too because i obviously can't relate because i never had a moment in my life where i was like i'm gonna be something else I'm going to choose to be something that I'm not, you know, transracial dude, transracial, trans black. And, and yeah, she's, she's identified herself as uh, having like black heritage or like even Puerto Rican. She I did think. a 23 and me and she found herself to be <laughs> 0.08% black. Dog, and 23 ran. and me wasn't around at that time. Oh my this God. is, this <laughs> is a mental, head. yeah, this is a mental disorder, you know? That's fucking nuts to me. Yeah. Man. And the fact that you're able to live that life for that long. And 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 to to keep up with that lie to the point where she almost I think she probably almost believed it. You know there was a documentary on her where mm -hmm. they kind of followed her everyday life. Mm -hmm. I think the people, I think the sad thing about it is, and the reason why I don't really clown on her too much now mm -hmm. is because her children are being affected. Mm -hmm. So her kids are half black, half white, but mm -hmm. they know them as oh you're Rachel Dolezal's kid. Right. So you know they're getting bullied and they're getting picked on and yeah. they're getting upset about it because people are saying negative things about their mom. Yeah. But, you know, a po other part of me is like, suck it up, kid. That's what your mom did. You know, she got to pay the piper. That's that's a choice that she made. Yeah. She chose to be, <laughs> she chose to be transracial. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, the kids are obviously paying for the sins of their mother. Um, but she had to have been aware on some level that. That I'm, is a real possibility. I'm trans fat. That's what I am, dude. I was I was adopted into this fat Korean body. I'm actually a skinny person. I'm trans fat. No, you're trans skinny then. No, no okay. You're you know stuck what? in a fat man's body. body. I'm trans skinny, dude. And in a previous life, I was trans fat. There's a double entendre right there. There's two meanings to that. Trans fat and trans fat. I'm trans skinny. I'm supposed to be skinny, but I'm stuck in this fat ass lumpy I mean, body. Yeah, if, if that's the case, then... Just throw fucking logic and reasoning out the door. You could be whatever the fuck you say you are, yeah. you know? I wonder if people, I wonder if she's using the whole transracial thing mm -hmm. um, and bringing in uh, transsexuality as her defense. Because mm. I wonder what people are going to feel about that. People of like the transgender community, mm -hmm. they're like, hold mm -hmm. on, you're, 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 you're a little crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, look. It's it's that's a that's a really complicated issue, you know. Right? Um, I just want to see Jubilee Project should do that. Tra <laughs> transgender versus transracial people. Dog, that, it would just be Rachel Dolezal and what's her name? Uh, Jessica Krug. Jessica Krug and Rachel Dolezal, <laughs> and it'd just be those two because there's nobody else in the world like that. They they should sit down and have a conversation I with would each love other. That. A trans is transracial versus transgender. <laughs> Because yeah. one's definitively real and the other one's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that, but that's the thing is just that if this is like real in their mind, because look, I don't, I don't know what's going through their head. I don't know if they truly believe at some point that they are what they think they are. Um, or in the back of their head, they're always just kind of like, well, I know I'm not that, but this is what I want to be. Because I'm 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 just curious because I'm I'm thinking about what the arguments are right mm -hmm. because when you read online and you you know people who are people who don't believe that uh, transgenderism is real mm -hmm. that it's it's I, I think people like Ben Shapiro talk about it they say that it's uh, a mental disease that mm -hmm. needs to be dealt with that mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. once again people don't fucking crucify me I'm just saying what other people are saying <laughs> well I mean that's that's a stance of a lot of conservative uh, Republican yeah. Christians right yeah. is that. Things like homosexuality. It's a mental yeah, yeah, disease. It's, yeah, it's a mental disease that can be fixed or cured. Right. Yeah. So if the argument for transgenderism, right, if if, if 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 they're saying that this is the body that I, I wasn't born in, I guess technically somebody could say this is also the race that I wasn't really born in as well. Mm -hmm. So why can't I change it? Why where's my support group? I guess technically they could use that argument. Mm -hmm. And then what, what what would you say to that? 
I, that's the thing. That, right. What yeah, would you say to that? It's a, but people were concerned about this because they were saying that um, they were using the slippery, like uh, a slippery slope type mm -hmm. of argument that mm -hmm. if you do this, that it's going to lead to this and lead to this and lead to that. Right. And there was a, a on a JK News article a while back, there was um, there was people that were petitioning to it was people who were uh, sexual offenders, mm -hmm. like specifically against like children. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, we shouldn't be in jail because we have a mental disorder. Oh man. And, and then, you know, people were saying that's a slippery slope because you could say that with just about anything. Yeah. I, um, I, and, and look, I'm not, I'm not, uh, advocating, um, you know, child abuse or, you know, the, any type of thing like that. But we talked about it on the podcast before in some cultures, um, an age that we would consider minors here in America is of legal age to get married oh, and yeah. to have to have sexual relations. So from a cultural lens in a cultural context, right? That could lend to that argument of, hey, that's just how it is in some other parts of the world, right? But it's like, well, yeah, you can say that, but at the end of the day here in America, the law is not that. Yeah, <laughs> The law says you gotta be 18 or over. You know, to be classified as an adult, mm -hmm. uh, to have, I guess, sexual relations with somebody who's older than 18 as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is a very slippery slope. Once you start kind of bringing in those arguments into the picture is like, well, where do you draw the line then? Yeah. Where, where, where is that line in the sand where you can say, okay, well, that is where we're going to have to say that it stops there. Right. Dog, this is, this is, that is the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. Jessica Krug. Mm -hmm. Krug. Yeah. K-R-U-G. I don't know if it's Krug or Krug. I'm pretty sure Krug. it's Krug. Je Jessica Krug. It's so yeah. funny that for number one, she's the transracial lady that mm. cancels herself. That's the funniest <laughs> fucking headline I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. I think a lot of people that is odd. or a lot of news outlets were, were uh, putting it like that is like... Um, the transracial know. canceler. Yeah. She sounds she's like a, 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 the dumbest villain I've ever heard in my life <laughs> in a comic book. The transracial canceler. Um, when I was reading into it... This podcast is brought to you by Better Help. Is there something interfering with your happiness or maybe you realize that your mental health just needs a boost or it's something you haven't really focused on in your life. See, this year, especially since we've been cooped up with limited social interactions, we really need to check in on our mental health. I will always say this, but just to say it again, your mental well-being is as important as your physical well-being. For those of you who don't know, BetterHelp is great because they can match you with your own professional licensed therapist. You can schedule your sessions via phone, communicate and message online, do video calls, and you can even change your counselors if needed. If you're at home and you want to try online counseling, give this a try please i love it and you can too if you want to give this a try genius brain listeners i got the hookup to get 10 percent off your first month of better help just type in betterhelp.com slash genius to get that offer today once again that's b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p.com slash genius it sounded like there were faculty members who were starting to dig into her past and so she was starting to feel pressure and that's why she outed herself before anybody else can um, <laughs> I wonder why. Why were they digging into her past? There must have been something that raised some red flags. They probably saw her cooking and she didn't use salt. And they're like, hold on a second. <laughs> hold the fuck on a second. You black? I was like, yes, I is. <laughs> she's, doing, she's being super extra with it. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, dude. She's yeah. like trying to do too much. So she yeah. just eats watermelon every day. Yeah. Like the most racist shit ever. <laughs> This lady's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, so that's so ridiculous. You know, that was a that was a nice little change of pace from all the other shit that's going on. That's hilarious to yeah. me, man. Um, and then another headline. I don't know if you've been. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't. I just pictured this lady just walking into class. <laughs> she's just like, what's up, y'all? <laughs> like, what y'all doing? And they're like, why are you talking like that? Who are you? It's like, this, this is how black folks speak. <laughs> like, no, no. We, we speak like normal people. It's like you take stereotypes and then you take it she to the next level. She just takes it to the next yeah, level. Yeah, just exaggerate it. Um, no, but this other uh, kind of headline news that's been making the rounds is, uh, I don't know if you heard about it, about Trump having known how devastating and serious the COVID-19 is from the what? very beginning. Yeah, so um, recordings have leaked uh, in interviews that he did with a reporter back in, I think, like February. And um, he is pretty much saying that, yeah, this is a lot deadlier than the flu. 
you know um really? and, yeah this is uh this is pretty serious but i don't want to cause a panic so that's why he's choosing to talk about it the way he has talked about it but it's like motherfucker there's almost two hundred thousand people dead cause yeah. a panic yeah you could have saved motherfucking 200 well not all of their lives but uh, probably a good chunk of it if you just said from right at the beginning all right guys it's some real shit. This is serious. We got to take the measures to make sure that we stay protected. Dude, there's been a lot of weird misinformation too. Uh, not too long ago, everybody was retweeting this one thing. I'm talking about everybody who doesn't want to believe COVID is real, mm. right? Okay. Uh, that, that they find it to be a hoax. So the CDC put something out where they're saying that something along the lines of 6% of people um, who died of COVID mm -hmm. Uh, it was only about 6% of the reported cases of people who died of COVID or something mm -hmm. like that, right? And everybody was retweeting it. And when I read that, I was like, oh, what the fuck? And so I was like, if that's the case, that sucks mm -hmm. because they said it was a lot more. Mm -hmm. So they were purporting that whatever, 180,000 um, people who died of COVID didn't actually die. It was only 6% of that number. And I'm like, what? That's fucking ridiculous. So I read the article and I was like, wait, that's not, that's not what the article is saying. Mm. So people were misconstruing it. So the CDC had to come back or people who were reading it and, and like clarify. Uh, and clarify. It's like, no, you dumb fucks. That's not what we're saying. Yeah. We're saying that 6% of people who died just died directly from COVID. Yeah. But there was a lot, you're, but we're not talking about the comorbid, comorbidity. Mm -hmm. There was, with the other 180,000 people, the leading factor of their death was COVID, mm -hmm. but it was the, it aggravated their existing conditions. For example, diabetes. They mm -hmm. were overweight. They had asthma. Mm. This is what we're talking about. We're not talking about people who got into a car accident and they said it was they died from COVID. We're talking up, about people. We're talking about the comorbidity and the fatality that COVID caused that they would have been fine perfectly fine without if COVID wasn't in their system. Mm. And so it's stupid that they had to clarify that shit because people were running amok with that article. I mean, but that's kind of the sign of the times, right? Where it's just headlines, you know, um, and, and sensationalism that they people take and then they spread that or I guess <laughs> spread a misinformation rather than real and, information. And just to clarify something too, I truly a hundred percent wish COVID isn't real. I, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm <laughs> Who saying? Who doesn't? Who doesn't like, fucking I, I'm, wish? And I'm not hyper paranoid either. I'm not walking around just hazmat suited up. I'm not wearing gloves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm, but I'm gonna wear a mask. I'm mm -hmm. gonna do my part, and I'm Absolutely. gonna be around other other adults who are young and healthy. Mm -hmm. If you're old. If you're sickly and shit, I'm never going to be around you, even mm -hmm. if I feel good, just mm -hmm. because I don't feel right about it. Mm -hmm. Also, too, just to just just to just to point this out, I do have a disagreement with how our government has been handling this because now it's been not even just our government, it's just people in this country, right? Because there is an issue with somebody saying, well, you guys said that it wasn't going to last this long, but it's now it's September. But the other side of that deal was you were supposed to follow the rules. Yeah, there's a caveat to yeah. that, you know? It's not just oh, it's going to go away in uh, X amount of time. It's like there's there are different variables to that yeah. happening, you know? Because when people speak about it, they're, they're, at, they're acting as if they followed the rules to the T and they didn't get the said <sighs> result or what was promised to them. Bro. We as a country did not do a really, really good job. Okay, let's, we, let's, let's be more specific here. Um, not not as a not a country as a whole. Yeah. Groups of people. Yeah. There's a lot of groups of people around the country who have not done their part. Yeah. Actually so much so did the exact opposite. Uh because they're they are adamantly against either the the idea that COVID exists or the need to do take certain precautionary measures in order to protect themselves and others. Yeah. Because for them it becomes a political issue. It's it's a political statement when you put on a mask or you don't put on a mask. Yeah. And you remember I was telling you like the, the stupidest shit about this whole COVID situation is how it became a politicized matter. Yeah. This is not a fucking political issue. Yeah. This, this is a health issue, you know? And you cannot look at what's going on. I, well, actually, you know what? I take that back because I am certain there are parts uh, throughout the country in certain states and cities where... It's like nothing has ever changed. And yeah. people are just going about their lives completely normally and not doing any of this shit. The mask, socially distancing. And you wonder why the fuck we're in the state that we're in. It's not a mystery, man. Yeah. It, it really, it's like, well, 
of course we're in the situation that we're in and it pisses you know me off and i'm sure a lot of other people who are trying to do their part to to kind of um make this go away faster sooner than later is that fuck man because of people like that because people like that exist this shit just gets prolonged for everybody yeah and it's like dude I want to fucking have some sense of normalcy again. Yeah. You know, I want to, I want to return. To- I, I really do believe though, at the end of the day, um, our sense of normalcy is going to come back sooner than later, mm-hmm. just because now that pe- it's kind of just known that people just don't give a fuck. Mm. We're just going to have to deal with the consequences now. So it, it is what it is just because it's what it's now September and businesses haven't been open for damn near six months. People have lost their livelihoods. Dude, in Koreatown, it's nuts. Dude, uh, Beverly Sundu was gone. Yeah, Beverly Sundu was closed by the twentieth of this month. People will never have Beverly Sundu before, I know, man. Uh, ever again. And the reason why I, I say this is super sad, and we, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine named Matt, and he's a chef, and he kind of brought this up. He mm-hmm. goes, you know, it, it sucks that, you know, a lot of the restaurants that we enjoy, specifically in very like niche areas like Koreatown, mm-hmm. um. I don't think uh, we've kind of realized it that these are foods that we probably our kids will never have mm. because these younger kids aren't number one taking over these businesses mm-hmm. and they're the ones with the recipes they're the ones that's going to keep this tradition up but now like covid is exacerbating the situation they're making it happen a lot faster mm-hmm. like so if you guys don't know um this the sundubu place which is the spicy soft uh tofu korean soup thing right yeah uh it's the best spot in cape town everybody knows this spot um and there's also a chain called BCD, and that's like the spot that you go to when it's super late at night. Yeah, twenty four hours. <laughs> yeah, right. So, but everybody goes to this joint here because it tastes a lot better, mm-hmm. and they have like this thing called torso bibimbap, which is this hot stone, um, kind of like make it yourself rice and vegetables, rice and vegetable, yeah, meat chili thing. paste, exactly. Yeah. So that these are foods that people won't have, and this is like an older generation who who probably they probably want to retire, and they're probably just doing it out of joy, but. Um, now because of COVID and how long it's going, they're they're losing money. So what's the whole point? It's yeah, it's crazy like how quickly things have changed and shifted um, during the past several months. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's just it just goes to show you like how fragile everything is. You know what I mean? It, the restaurant business, I, I'm I'm finding out that um, majority of the public don't they don't actually understand. Um, how these numbers work. Mm-hmm. So, for example, there was a friend of mine who I was telling uh, one of my favorite spots is, is struggling a little bit and mm-hmm. they st- started a GoFundMe for their restaurant. And he was saying, I don't understand how they can start a GoFundMe when they charge so much for their food. They're definitely taking a lot of money. And in my mind, I'm laughing. I'm like, the the cost of their food isn't based on perception, it's based on the cost of, what, of the ingredients. And they mm-hmm. go, well, <laughs> And it, when you break it down, people are trying to break it down to something as simple as, well, when I go home, if I buy bread, this and that, you, I do the math here and there. It's probably only costing about $2 a piece to make this. <laughs> so why are you charging 14 bucks? So you're not talking about rent. Right. You're not talking employees. about employees, workers. Yeah. Comp. There's so much things that go along. You're not talking about um, cleaning supplies. You're not talking about to-go containers. Yeah. Water bill, electricity Utilities, bill, yeah. utility this is not that simple. Exactly. And so when, when it comes to restaurants, restaurants on average take away profit wise 10 to 15%. Mm-hmm. It's that small. Mm-hmm. So when you see a restaurant and, and then you look at the bill, you see this, this place is packed out and you go, well, if I calculate it in my head, they're probably making like close to, I don't know, uh, $10,000 a day. Well, they're, what they're pocketing is only about 10% of that. Yeah. Right. That's $1,000. Right. That's 1500 bucks, 10 to 15%. Mm-hmm. And then when your your business uh, for a period gets shut down, and then once you're allowed to reopen, only in a limited capacity, think about that. You yeah. still got the same amount of $10, bills. Ten thousand dollars a week. I mean, like yeah, a week, yeah, not, not, not yeah, a day. I'm sorry, yeah. that's a lot of money. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're balling out their money. They're making like eight or ten grand a week. I'm yeah. sorry, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because look, land is not cheap in LA. You know, to yeah. rent out these buildings, everything is expensive. Yeah, it's like that kid who. Uh, it reminds me of kids who, when they first start off and they think that they don't need their parents' help mm-hmm. and they go, oh, all I have to do is um, pay for rent and that's it. It's like, no, dummy. No, no, that's not what it is. Or yeah. when they buy a f- their first car, they go, I bought my car and I make 
$800 a month. This car costs 700. I still have $100 left. Did you forget about gas? Did yeah. you forget about insurance? insurance? Did you forget about accidents? <laughs> yeah. When you have to replace your tires? Yeah. Oil changes? Maintenance? Maintenance? Yeah. Cleaning? Mm -hmm. Did you forget about all this shit? Yeah. And they, they find out that they're in a deficit. Well, that's kind of how it is with a lot of these businesses. When you don't own a business, you don't know what it takes to run it. Yeah, for sure. And look, um, it's hard to fault uh, the everyday person to that doesn't know or understand about these things but it's just like don't jump to conclusions you know yeah especially when when you see a business that's struggling and suffering and the mm -hmm. first thing that you think about is well you're taking my money to make this food yeah like how little how do you have no empathy at all yeah exactly it, it's it's safer to assume right now that most businesses are struggling um at best they're just staying afloat you yeah, know and they're just waiting for the pandemic to end yeah um, I mean, obviously, there are some businesses who have grown um, places like Amazon, Walmart, right? Because they offer essentials. A lot of the shit that people still do need are being purchased through those uh, portals. But yeah. most small, midsize, and even large companies, I mean, they've taken a major hit during these crazy yeah. times, man. And um, I, I think if people are thinking oh that people these these companies or restaurants or whatever are trying to take advantage of them <laughs> during this time. definitely not the case nah, man they're just trying to make a living trying to make ends meet like you guys are you know yeah it, it's it, just an example of that too um recently so do you, do you you know joe budden has a podcast right it's yeah. really popular so joe mm -hmm. budden if you guys out there don't know on the spotify platform i mean there has been a lot of people uh doing podcasts on spotify uh -huh. there's a few bigger names out there yeah um, but Joe Button is really who kind of put Spotify podcast on the map. Mm. I didn't know that Spotify could do podcasts until I heard of Joe Button stuff, mm. which I think is true for a lot of people. I mean, I, you know, I'm just making a general uh, assumption here. Those damn Joes, Joe Button, now Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, <laughs> right? Taking everything. <laughs> right. So Joe Button recently, he's not, he's, he's leaving Spotify a mm hundred -hmm. percent. So I guess what happened here was that, um, they had a very specific deal that he wanted a certain amount of money. They couldn't come to terms with it. And then Joe Budden felt really disrespected. Mm -hmm. But online, people are saying like, oh, Joe Budden is over evaluating himself. He doesn't know, you know, who does he think he is that he could ask for X amount of money. But in my mind, just because I know, first of all, whatever Joe Budden does mm -hmm. on, on a space outside of music now, it's gold. Right, he's built a name for himself, mm -hmm. and on top of that, he put Spotify podcast on the map. Mm -hmm. And I think for him, he felt that um, Spotify just kind of used him as leverage to get other podcasts, and they never developed a personal relationship mm -hmm. and respected what he's done for the platform. And so, the money that he asked for apparently was, I think it was like two hundred million, which mm -hmm. is a hundred million more than what Joe Rogan mm -hmm. was was asking because of the legwork that he did into building up podcasts, building the podcast or whatever. But they couldn't come to a deal. But people have been flaming Joe Budden for that shit, mm. which is kind of odd to me. I don't know why. And that's what I'm saying. Like people don't understand the 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 back end of things. Yeah. Right. They just see, oh, is Joe Button as big as Joe Rogan? Why does Joe Button feel like he deserves more? Mm -hmm. It's like well, because Joe Rogan didn't build up Spotify. Yeah. I'm not saying that Joe Joe Button was a part of the infrastructure. And this is just to give a, a an alternative take on it. Mm -hmm. And um I don't know how, how Joe Budden feels about it. But if Joe Budden feels like he was a huge benefactor into getting this platform uh, larger, why can't he ask for some more? 200 mil is a lot of money. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. 200 Actually, mil. Actually, I got to look up how Joe wrote. Let's, let's, see, let's see what Joe Budden said about that shit. I'm so 200 curious. 200 mil is, yeah. I mean, I don't know how close they got to that figure or, or if like a three figure, you know, um, a $3 million figure uh, deal was even on the table. It's yeah. one thing to be asking for 200, but yeah. what is Spotify actually willing to to offer, right? Um, but- I mean, I could understand like just being uh, the pioneer, the the trailblazer who's who created a path and avenue for these other podcasters to come on and, and thrive on the platform to feel like he's entitled to to some equity, you know, or not yeah. equity, but, you know, just to share the pie. Um, but I mean, 200 mil does sound pretty fucking steep, though, you know, I, over how many years? Was he asking for that? Shit, I don't even know. Okay. I, I don't know how many years uh, Joe Rogan signed for, but it's, I don't yeah. give a, you could sign me up for 30 years. I don't <laughs> give a fuck. $200 million, you own my soul, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you take Mariel, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here's a here's an article by Variety. So Joe yeah. Budden says he's splitting from Spotify, claims platform undermined and undervalued uh, exclusive 
podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was exclusively on Spotify. Okay. So September 23rd, I cannot tell you where this podcast will be, Button said. But as it stands, I can tell you where it will not be. And that is Spotify. Mm. It was our, and uh, Spotify rep said it was our desire to keep Joe Button on Spotify as Joe referenced on his show. We made him a considerable offer, one that was uh, significantly lo significantly larger and many times the value of the existing agreement and reflected of the current market and size of his audience. Unfortunately, we could not come to terms and we respect his wishes to find a new home for his show. Basically, that's um, corporate talk for fuck you, Joe Button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he called it a bum ass deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, Spotify never cared about this podcast individually. Button said on the podcast, Spotify only cared about our contribution to the platform. Mm. Undermined and undervalued. Uh, the ringer for two hundred fifty million, which he said was actively pitting against, uh, pitting pitting against us. Uh, Button accused Spotify pillaging his audience as a way to build up its broader podcast strategy. You pillage the audience from the podcast and you've continued to pillage each step of the way without any regard for the listeners. He said, in addition, Button compared Spotify's podcast podcast business to experience in the music business where he said artists are typically exploited financially. He also mentioned by name mm -hmm. Spotify executives who are no longer with the company but were instrumental in bringing him to the streaming platform. Uh, chief among them, Tuma Basa, who carries Spotify's popular rap caviar playlist and is now an executive at YouTube Music. We can't really talk about no business between us before. I know what took place with my brother Tuma said Button. Ooh, shit. Uh, Button called the he I called the Howard Stern of hip hop by the New York Times first launched his podcast in early 2015. So he's been on there for seven years. Yeah, yeah. And and look, I'm not surprised that <laughs> they they did him dirty like that. Or or in his view, he yeah. felt like he's been done dirty. Obviously, I don't know the intricacies of, of kind of what went down between the two parties, but yeah, it's pretty common. It's just like, yeah, we used you for what you're good for. You know, and shout out to uh, uh maybe I, I I can kind of understand what he's going through because mm -hmm. I felt similar sim similarly uh with the first um the first uh, company that I signed to when I first came on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, the company, it's full screen. Everybody mm -hmm. knows what full yeah. screen is. So it's a huge company. But I got signed to this guy named Song mm -hmm. and this guy, uh, George uh, Strompolis. Mm -hmm. And uh, George was originally from YouTube and he decided to open up his own ad agency and you know he opened up full, um, full screen. Yeah. Well, I left full screen because I actually felt the way, same way Joe Budden did. Mm -hmm. So when they, at the time, there was only a couple of people that was signed to full screen. Yeah. It was me uh, and Adam Carolla. Mm -hmm. Adam Adam Carolla at the time was the biggest podcaster in the space mm -hmm. over Joe Rogan and everybody. Yeah. So I remember uh, George, I had a personal relationship with this guy. We mm -hmm. had meals together. We had dinner. We used to kick it. We used to hang out, everything. Mm -hmm. So, but when full screen started getting bigger and the reason why I decided to sign with full screen over companies like Maker mm -hmm. was because full screen was a company that just started up. Mm -hmm. And what was kind of promised to me kind of like on the table was like, look, we're going to watch out for you. Yeah. We're a small company. Yeah. You're one of our first people that we're, that we're signing. So we're going to look out for you. Mm -hmm. They didn't do shit for me. Mm -hmm. The moment, and I kid you, I'm not saying this is some racial shit, but the moment they had other faces that were white, every fucking white person was put on their billboard and pushed it way above me. Yeah. And I was kind of put out there too, yeah. but they didn't set me up with any deals, any brand deals, no nothing. And this mm. is during the time brand deals were super fucking easy. Right. And so my last fucking straw was when um, they were giving out these uh, small little short television shows for people who were on the space and they had a huge following. At the time, my channel was popping. Right, and I was like, "Cool, like definitely full screen's gonna uh, throw some at me." And my manager Abe was was prodding at them. It's like, "Yo, David's ready to go. Like he comes from a stand up background. Let's do this." They gave this kid, this this one fucking white kid. Uh, he doesn't even do YouTube anymore. He's mm -hmm. he's a fucking nobody now. Mm -hmm. He uh, gave him a show to go to Korea and try out Korean food and to. <laughs> this one white kid to go to Korea and do a food travel show on my culture, dude. Yeah. And it was like a hundred thousand or a fucking two hundred. It was like a ridiculous money. That's crazy, man. The kid had fifty thousand subscribers. Yeah, insane. And that was my last. I said, "Fuck this company." I would have said the same. Yeah, yeah. And I was. I literally got out of a meeting, uh -huh. and they didn't do anything. And George too. He says he's like, after George sold the company. Basically, he was saying that, oh, it's kind of out of my hands. So mm -hmm. you know, George, I mean, he, George is a nice guy, yeah. but you know, at the end of the day. You know, fuck you guys. Like you did me fucking dirty. Like yeah. you, after you sold it, you made your money and you backed out and you disappeared. So I understand 
how Joe feels. It's like, and by the way, they signed a whole bunch of talent using my name mm -hmm. at the time because- mm -hmm. Oh, he's on the, with us, right? Yeah, uh, on so that I signed tip. a bunch of these YouTubers and yeah. they would use my name on their deck when they had absolutely nobody. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, cool. So they'll watch out for me. And yeah. I made a poor choice because Maker got sold to Disney and people had shares and then people made millions of dollars off of yeah. that shit. Yeah. I would be fucking <laughs> rich right now. George, you're a nice guy, but bro, fuck you. You, you. you did not look out for me at all, man, you fucking bitch. Yeah, that's some cold ass shit. It's pretty much like, again, typical of kind of entertainment executive type. You yeah, know, man. Where, when money gets in the way, it doesn't fucking matter. Well, no, it's just uh, we need you till we don't need you anymore. Yeah. You know? And then once it's like, yeah, all right, see you. <laughs> we, got, we got all these other acts now. Um is a cold and he's a likable guy too it's just like i still like him because he's likable you mm -hmm. know i don't think he has an evil bone in his body yeah but he does stuff that's very disloyal it's like some disloyal ah, say man just well, fucking white folks dude they got that disloyal bone in their look, fucking man body. you could be likable and still selfish you I know, know. you, you, you should have watched out for me bro you, you could you could still have that kind of charm that you put on people to, <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny um I don't know, George. If I see you in person, I'll, I'm still going to be cordial with you. I don't <laughs> Not know, me, man. George. I'm going to fucking slap yeah. your bitch ass. Yeah. Yeah. George, if you ever Believe listen to I this. I don't even know what you look like, but I'm going to look you up. I'm going to find you. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's just, it's, it's funny. When I when I first met him, he was uh, he was all dressed in like Hawaiian t-shirt flip-flops. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he became an exec at, uh, he was like this huge exec because full screen blow up. He's wearing mm -hmm. like these Italian suits and shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dog, who the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Fucking weirdo. But um, nice guy. He's like, my name is Giorgio now. Get it correct. Yeah. I was like, you know, just do, you know, he's doing his own thing. And if I ever see him in person, I'm to be a stupid cordial with him. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think that he did have a habit of looking out for himself uh, over others, you know? And, 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 and I think the thing that's coldest about that is because you guys were such a small group. Yeah. You know? And it's like, usually when it's like that, when it's that startup type environment, it's more like a family mentality. Yeah. You know, like if we fail, we fail together. If we win, we win together. Yeah. You know, if we retire, we retire together. But it's like, nah. And it was just like, ah, oh, it's out of my control. It's mm -hmm. like, bro, you're you're still a part of the board. You still had power. You could have nudged somebody, something, somebody the right way, but he just didn't care enough. Or or, you know, laid some stuff out when he was still in negotiation phase exactly. of selling the company. Have. And it's like, damn, you had no idea the shit that I did for you. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, that's I think that's that was one of those early onset things where I, I just I was like, Man, this business is very interesting. Like you know, the thing is, as long as I've known you, this is the first time I actually heard about that story. Yeah. I, I knew you you left full screen a it, with a bad taste in your mouth, but I didn't know the the details of it. Yeah, yeah and I, you know, I'm, it just, it's, that, that was like one of those things that really fucking irritated me. Mm -hmm. I, I think I kind of just let it go. Also, just because there's something about that guy where I'm just like, I don't know if he has evil intent in his bones, mm -hmm. but he has... Uh, scumbag habits. Right, right, right. Again, you know, so, so yeah. I've never really... I'm not even really bad mouthing him now. I'm mm -hmm. just saying like that was a very fucked up situation. Well, yeah. you obviously feel a certain way about it. You know what I mean? It was maybe his intention, like you're saying, wasn't I'm going to fuck David over. His intention was I want to be rich. Uh, like I'm number one. Yeah. I want to be rich. But then he's failing to think about the other people who helped to put him in that position maybe. Yeah. Um, and as a result, what happened happened. Right. Yeah, because he even had a falling out with like I, uh, I'm pretty like some other people too. I mean, it can't be just me because I'm on the peripheral in his mm -hmm. life. So it's mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know, man. Shout outs to you, guy. I'm happy that you sold uh, full screen for whatever money that you did and you made a shit ton of money. Mm. Very happy for you. But I wish you would have just uh, watched out for the people that you said you were going to watch out for. Or at yeah. least watch out for the people who helped you to create what full screen was at that point. Yeah. To even put you in the position to have an offer. Yeah. To have somebody interested in buying you out. You know what I mean? It's like that shit didn't just happen because of him. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm I'm assuming this guy was wasn't on social media doing his own thing, right? Yeah, I I, I was there when mm -hmm. that office was literally nothing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking about, in sh it was like a small little office with a few desks, mm -hmm. and then it grew even bigger. Then it went to Col the, the Culver City lot. Then it mm -hmm. got even bigger than that. Then they were working with like Univision, and they were doing so many different things. And I just watched it grow up from the ground up. Yeah, and uh, I'm like, I'm not saying I deserve you know, a whole bunch of shit. But I, what I deserved was the relationship that I curated with him personally. And it wasn't tactical either. It was just, I thought he was a really cool dude. Mm -hmm. And 
well, it was kind of tactical because I went there because I I thought that I would be watched for. Right, yeah. right. I mean, no, I mean, there was that was a business. Decision. That was a business. Decision. Yeah, in, it was in, a poor. I should have went to Maker. <laughs> well, you fucked up there. Right? <laughs> Don't what remind can I me. Say? Hey, uh, you dumped a fucking <laughs> gajillion air girl, you dumbass. <laughs> but um. Yeah, that was your full screen. <laughs> Are they still around though? Is full I screen think they're still, still still around. I think okay. they're still trying to sign people. Okay. Yeah, because I, I I don't know. After, after by the way, kids, if you ever go on YouTube and MCN tries to sign you, you absolutely do not need them. Who? They'd, MCN. These are like full screens. Oh, okay. You do not need them. They're basically going to say that they're going to connect you with X amount of people. They really won't connect you to anything else. The most thing that they can do for you is get you tickets to VidCon, but Google AdSense is the same shit. So the difference between what they do and what you'll do is that they'll take Google AdSense, which you'll already have. And then on top of that, they'll take a cut from your Google AdSense. So they're taking a bigger cut now. Mm. MCNs are fucking useless. <laughs> I don't know who MCN is. You guys sound like scumbags. <laughs> yeah. So those companies now, they're completely useless they don't really set you up with any great brand deals you can curate that yourself as mm -hmm. long as you have a big following so if you're ever blowing up on youtube and they hit you up and they try to sign you just to let you know they'll probably disagree with everything that i've said but every <laughs> mcn has hit me up to sign me and they are fucking useless i got one word for you guys yeah <laughs> they're useless yeah. you build up your own following people will come and they'll know who you are just have an open email and after that you're good you know who i got respect for though is um the guys behind 88 rising what they've been able to do with that, I guess, agency slash record. It's like an all in one yeah, type it's of like, thing. I don't know what it is know? exactly. Yeah. And I remember when it first, uh, they were first advertising it, they just kind of did it with a teaser. They put up like two teaser videos on their channel and it was just like 88 rising. But there was completely, it was completely ambiguous as to what this thing is. Is it a band? Is it, you know, an artist? Like, what what is this 88 rising? But they were trying to just, I guess use cool aesthetics to create interest and then look at what it is now, man. I mean, like they're really trying to do everything right now. Um, yeah, they have uh, the Brian Emanuel, Brian Emanuel. They have yeah. Joji. Um, they have the higher brothers from Sichuan, China, you know, um, they're the ones who coordinated kind of that whole, uh, the Ichima remixes with like uh, um, ASAP Fergie, Oh, how did um, they do that? I don't really know. I don't really know how they uh, pulled the strings oh, to get the, that the done. Are they the Chinese guys that like they have dreads and shit? And all yeah, yeah. They're the ones who basically like do trap shit, but just rap in Chinese. I think they're fucking dweebs, but <laughs> yeah, I think they're fucking dweebs. I mean, they're way. hugely popular in, in their area though. Of course, they're fucking swagger jackers, dude. Like their shit's so fucking... <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I, I, I saw their shit. I'm yeah. like, you guys... You want to talk about cultural appropriation? Yeah. That right. is cultural appropriation yeah. to the fucking team right right but but here's the thing within that within that it's like is it an an intention coming from a negative place though or i don't think cultural appropriation is ever from a negative place i think the 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 issue with that is mm -hmm. they're they're taking like almost like the clownery of a culture mm -hmm. you know and they're profiting mm -hmm. off of it well you know? no i mean like when i say negative it's like to be aware that you're borrowing from from this culture and then like not acknowledging it. Well, you know they know I mean? now and they still yeah. don't give a fuck. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't really know much about like that group. Mm. Um, all I don't I know shit either. I'm just saying stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an instigator. I just saw their shit and I was like, you guys are fucking trash. Yeah. Joji though, fucking dope. Mm. Uh, that kid, Brian Emanuel, yeah. didn't like a lot of his stuff, but he's grown as an artist. Oh, I'm I mean, like, oh shit. This kid's fucking getting well, good. Well, you took, you took a, a viral sensation and, and turned him into an actual artist yeah. because everyone just thought, you know, it was just a one gonna, hit wonder. Yeah. One hit wonder. It went viral. That's going to be it. But not the dude has been putting out consistently good projects. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, this kid's got something. Yeah. Man. Um, and it, you know, I just think it's dope how they took kind of like Asian entertainment entertainers and and gave them a platform to be represented because there was such misrepresentation yeah. uh, or underrepresentation of Asian artists, and they turn it into a legitimate platform. You know, they're having their own fucking festivals, right? Yeah. Uh, Packed, yeah, sold out, sold out. Uh, they were supposed to be a part of Coachella this year too. Yeah, you know, I mean, and this is in a span of like what three, four years, bro. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really. I'm going to be the next one. I, I need to do. I'm gonna start. Rapping. Hey, man! They don't have any comedians. I am going to start rapping though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Then there's probably breaks. <laughs> no, on no, that hold on a second. Man. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm gonna learn how to rap tomorrow, 
and I'm going to message some people. <laughs> hey, your boy's in this house. I have a new song. It's called Peeping Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know about all that. <laughs> it's hey, gonna happen to me. More power to you, man. To try, it's, it's gonna fucking happen to me. You have no idea. I'm, 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 I'm a blow up. <laughs> I'm gonna blow up. Wait, so are you, are you currently with anybody now? Then, or no? Are you, no? I've been doing my own thing now for fucking like six, seven years. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and then so, I'm curious, man. Like YouTube, I saw recently had another agreement with like their monetization. Um. I guess policy or whatever. Does that change anything for you? So, how monetization on YouTube works, and you know, people on YouTube can correct me if I'm wrong. They, they throw ads on your mm -hmm. on your videos, yeah, and obviously they get a huge lump sum. Or, for the or ads. you could also choose, right, of of like how much ad you want to place in the videos. Too. Yeah, you could place, you could put ad placement. I yeah. could put it every fucking three seconds. If yeah, I want I've to. seen people do that shit. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't care enough to do that. I don't really monetize much off my off these videos, anyways, mm -hmm. just because I say stuff like fuck. Yeah. Damn and shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cock, penis, blowjob. So I say these type of things. So yeah. I can't really monetize that well either way. Um, but it, you know how these ad agency works. They they get these ads and they they distribute it to whatever videos that are out there. And mm -hmm. obviously they have a, a large moving system for it. Mm -hmm. But now uh, ever since, uh, actually the huge catalyst to why this happened was because of people like Logan Paul, where mm -hmm. he was doing stuff like filming people committing suicide. And so- yeah. Fucking that guy. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's just like another Justin Bieber. Yeah. You know, he has a bunch of yes men around him. Mm -hmm. He can't really think straight. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, ads were like, yo, whoa. I, ad companies were like, yeah, I don't want my ads on these type of videos. And mm -hmm. it started going into the conversation. You know, some of these videos are terrorist videos. Mm -hmm. And we're having our ads run on it. <laughs> so I, I don't want this to happen. So that's when Adpocalypse happened, where they were just shutting everybody ads, mm -hmm. every, everybody's uh, ads off. Yeah. So... Uh, at that point, if you were cursing, you said anything controversial, you just weren't going to get ad on your stuff. And my my profits plummeted like ninety percent. Yeah, and so it was it was kind of weird. Um, so now what these MCNs are doing? So when you get um, when you're when you have your Google AdSense and you are going to put up a video and you're going to do ads, mm -hmm. what happens now is they ask you what's in this? Is there nudity? Is there ludity? Is there is there uh, profanity? What's yeah. in this video? Yeah. Just to see what ads that they're going to put on. Yeah. And so um, then they now it's selective about what type of ads on. So bigger ads won't be on there. Maybe uh -huh. a few like crappy ones here and there. Uh -huh. But um, for example, my my CPMs, what, what it was like what click per minute or whatever. Yeah, click per minute. Yeah, yeah click per minute. Mm -hmm is the lowest I've ever seen in my life. At this point, you mm -hmm. might as well just throw shit in my face. Like, it's terrible. Like people will get an average CPM of about uh, like three to seven, three to seven on the high part, yeah. right? My shit's like at one something. Mm. It's ridiculous how low it is. Yeah. And it's been like that since Adpocalypse and I yeah. can't even fight it. Wow. So that's why we switched over to podcast forms and yeah. I do other types of uh, revenue because at this point, I'm just creating just to create. And and also then viewership levels go hand in hand with that exactly. too, right? Exactly. So they're, they're not going to push your videos out there because mm. they're not making money off of it. Yeah. So you get fucked either way. Yeah. At the end of the day, the platform is made for people who do like children's content, um, life logging with no cursing. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can't cuss at all. If what? you cuss in general, they say yeah. light profanity, you say shit, damn, you might be okay. Uh -huh. But if you don't at all and you keep it a family channel and yeah. you don't keep it in the end, if you keep it in a family mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. then it's perfect. Mm. Then then you'll you'll thrive on it. Yeah. It'll, it'll be dope. Yeah. And family content in general, what, how it works for ads, it makes the most amount of money. Mm. The two of the biggest genres that that make the most money when it comes for advertisement is uh, female content mm -hmm. and also family content. Mm. So no matter what, like I say, I have a podcast, right? And then we talk about controversial stuff, whatever, it gets decent views. Well, you could have a female podcast um, uh, who have not not female podcast, but a podcast with a huge female audience mm -hmm. that gets a quarter of my views, but they'll make ten times more money than I will mm. because female uh, the female audience has more buying power. It's mm. just statistically proven. So a lot of these ads want to throw their money on uh, female based uh, audiences mm -hmm. and also family uh, audiences because parents will buy a lot of shit for their kids. Mm. Yeah, that's how it works out. So I'm neither of those. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm very, very different. Yeah, but you just wait till I fucking bust nuts and Mariel and we have a kid. Your boy's starting a family channel. It's going to be called the So Songs. Oh my God. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. It's like the only reason why I'm going to have a kid is so I can monetize. <laughs> monetize the fuck out of my kid, but I'm blurring the shit out of their ugly face. Daddy loves you. Shit. Well, guys, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. 
What a fun episode. We <laughs> yeah. talked about a lot of shit. Always random as usual. Random as hell. Uh, you can find Edric at Ed2 on Instagram. Make mm-hmm. sure you guys check her out. Check Trek out. Trek it out. Shit. Secret <laughs> Society, where you guys can cop the clothing. Um, and we will see you all next time. All right, Joe. Peace.